What's that? Second week of practice, how'd it go? Uh, it's been pretty good. You know, in the perfect world, we've had a couple guys dinged up a little bit. Uh, some minor injuries, nothing major with the exception of Marco, who's in a cast, obviously, for <laughs> five more weeks with, uh, with the broken bone. But, uh, you know, we've had a couple guys foot aching, knee swelling and stuff. So I think that the change in the format is kind of giving us an opportunity to be wise and rest some of those guys. This might be a classic example of why the change in the rule helps us. Otherwise, you've got three weeks to pound everything in and maybe those kids don't get to take a day or two off. Uh, and it could, it could end up being a worse injury. So I think it's a. Uh, so I was going to ask you, is it starting earlier? Maybe are they more prepared for the start of the season or less prepared, do you think? Well, like we're that? all kind of in uncharted territory. I think, okay. it, you know, it can be a self fulfilling prophecy a little bit if you want to make it one way or the other. I don't think you're ever going to feel prepared for the start of the season. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be careful that you're, oh, well, now we're ready because there's always going to be issues to deal with. Because they're not sitting on the couch before this, they're not doing nothing, hopefully. Yeah, I, it's, yeah. I like the pace a lot better. Having, okay. having six weeks, 30 practices, and you can kind of stretch it out a little bit and with a couple of the guys we had dinged up it's not the end of the world if you miss a day of practice you know the pace is better um jordan is the one going with you to the pac-12 meetings yes is there a reason you chose him uh well it wasn't so much that i chose him the league chose him oh did they yeah so i'll do How what do the league tells him yeah. well he's a good representative for us he's yeah. a spokesman and uh you know he had a solid freshman year and uh you know, Hannah's our only uh, senior on our roster in the perfect world. I'd love to be able to have a, a senior go and represent us, but at the same time, you know, English is not Hannah's top language. So, that we, you know, we've got a few other obstacles to deal with. We've got three international kids on our team, and you have to be careful to put them in a, in a national spotlight like that and make them uncomfortable. So, um, you know, Jordan's going to do a fine job for us in representing us, and we're just... Uh, we're, it's going to be fun. It's a couple days. Is there a way to prepare school. him for what he's in for? You've been through it before, but is there a way to kind of get uh, ready for it, or is it just go ahead and swim? No, I mean, <laughs> uh, we do. We're going to do some media training on Friday with our whole team. Oh, okay. You know, so how we can better answer questions and make your jobs easier. Um, Did you need any help with that? We don't <laughs> rock. <laughs> Here's the suggestion box right there. Um, no, we're gonna. We don't practice tomorrow, Friday, so we're gonna take care of some uh, some photos, some team photos, and then you know sit down with the, for an hour or so with uh, Mike Lagashell, who's pretty good with some of that stuff. And just it's all part of the education, getting our guys a little more comfortable in front of a camera or a mic, and, and yeah. make sure we don't stutter and stammer too much. Coach, can you talk about Hannah's uh, progress? Just the, the improvement that he made over the summer. It's it's really uh, it's really unbelievable. You know, I I part of it is the fact that he was a junior college player, and with some junior college players, I think it's about halfway through their junior year, sometimes even their senior year, before you really feel like you know you got them and they understand some things. So I think part of that's the learning curve for him, but. More than anything, it's the commitment that he's had in getting himself in shape. He's lost 20 pounds. Uh, he's doing some conditioning things for us this fall that he hadn't been able to accomplish last year. And we had some really positive meetings he and I did in the spring and in the summer, you know, just about the fact that this is your last year, you know, and don't have any regrets because you're not in condition. And uh, Charles Stevenson, Rock, our strength coach, has done a great job with him. His body's changed, and consequently, his energy level and his bounce on the floor has changed. He looks like a different player, and he's playing with a lot of confidence. And as I said, he's our only senior on our roster, so um, he's bringing some leadership. You know, maybe not vocal, outward, but he, from a coach's perspective, he's got all the leadership traits in terms of a guy that's in here early for practice. You don't have to tell him things twice. He wants the right thing. He's a great teammate, uh, and we're all pulling for him, you know. And I think everybody on the team can kind of look at him and say, "Man, you know, let's do it for Hannah, being a senior and, and knowing everybody else has got a little more time on their clock." But uh, seeing the sense of urgency that he's had, I think, has been motivational with some of the rest of our guys to say, "You know, here's a guy that really wants it. He's proven that he wants it. He doesn't just talk about it, but he's." taking a lot of steps to have, to have a successful senior year, and I think it's an uh, inspiration for everybody. At this point, is he playing a four? You want him at a four? Well, you know, with some of the injuries that we've had, you know, Dowling's out with the ankle and Marco's out. Uh, I told you the other day in practice, we had Dakari and 
Princeton playing the four, so that obviously means Hannah's not at the four, but he's moved up to the five. So, uh, you know, I, I think everything happens for a reason. Uh, we might be a pretty good team playing small, and there, I'd like to think there's going to be times when we want to take advantage of some of our size. It, it's just important, I think, for everybody on our team to buy into their role. And, you know, if there's a game maybe where they don't play but 10 minutes, it's not, you know, it's all it's just part of kind of accepting our roles. And uh, it's going to be real interesting that way to see how it all shakes out. Jordan's back out there today. How limited is he right now? I don't think he's limited at all or he wouldn't be practicing. Yeah, he's ready to go. And uh, Again, it was just a precautionary two-day break. and uh, I completely trust our training staff. They're not going to turn him loose unless he's, he's ready to go. Tell me a little bit about Brandon Taylor's role on the team and the progress he's made. Uh, Brandon is uh, is one of our hardest workers, you know, and I think he's he's kind of the uh, he's the classic example of a player that kind of stayed. As I talked about with the acceptance his freshman year, maybe the first half of the year didn't go as he planned and uh, didn't get an opportunity to play a lot of minutes, but he just kept bringing the same intensity to practice and the same focus. He never got down. You know, when he wasn't playing a bunch, and then when that, when that window of opportunity was presented to him uh, at Washington, and he was the catalyst for us winning the road game at, at uh, you know against the Huskies, and I think that's he's kind of carried that over. He became a key component for us last year, and now he's not a freshman anymore. He's a lot more, you know, outgoing, I think, and comfortable in what he's doing, and he's he's, uh, he's given us a great spark. I think he's probably our best shooter on our team. So uh, he's doing a great job leading. Yeah, as long as we got good questions. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you.